It's almost time for this year's Major League Baseball playoffs. As fans of the game look forward to more memorable moments that will be replayed for years and experience the highs and lows of winning and elimination. But like any other sport, there are moments that the game would rather forget. One such nadir came on the 4th of June 1974 when the Cleveland Indians ran an infamous promotion in a game against the Texas Rangers. Meant to improve attendance at the otherwise unattractive Cleveland Stadium, it was extremely successful in attracting the wrong kind of crowd. The idea of a 10-cent beer night, equivalent to about 60 cents in today's money, may sound like an invitation to mayhem, but Cleveland had successfully hosted such evenings before, beginning with a Nicola beer game in 1971. However, two crucial factors would invite disaster this time around. A week before, the Indians and Rangers had been involved in a bench-clearing brawl at Arlington Stadium, Texas. The trouble in Arlington began when a hard slide at second base by Texas Lenny Randall was responded to by Indians pitcher Matt Wilcox, throwing behind Randall in his next at bat. Randall eventually bunted and was tagged out by Wilcox. Randall then struck Wilcox with his forearm and then was punched in the face by Indians first baseman John Ellis, which got the brawl underway. After the rock had finished, Indians players and coaches had been pelted with food and beer on their way back to the dugout. The game was ultimately lost by Cleveland. These events ensured that an already charged up crowd would be on hand on the night of the 10 cent beer promotion. Rangers manager Billy Martin was blasé about the upcoming games with the Indians. When asked by a Cleveland reporter if he would be taking any armour to Cleveland, he responded, Nah, they won't have enough fans there to worry about. The second factor was the rules for the 10 cent promotion. While customers were limited to purchasing six beers at a time, there was no limit to the number of purchases that could be made, allowing for vast alcohol consumption by any fan so inclined. Local media certainly didn't help during the build-up to the series. Talk radio and Cleveland broadcasters made inflammatory comments about the Rangers, while the Cleveland Plain Dealer printed a cartoon of Indians mascot Chief Wahoo wearing boxing gloves with the caption, be ready for anything. 25,000 turned up on the night of the game, double the usual attendance at Cleveland Stadium. The Rangers jumped out to a 5-1 lead, which soured the mood of the increasingly boozy crowd. During the course of the game, many of the more sober and family-oriented fans slowly decided to leave, reasoning that the already unruly atmosphere could only get worse. This left a remaining crowd, heavily concentrated with yahoos. A woman ran into the Indians on deck circle, flashed her chest, and attempted to kiss home plate umpire Nestor Chilak, who demurred. Following a Texas home run, a naked man sprinted onto the field and slid into second base, followed an inning later by a father and son who ran onto the outfield and mooned the fans in the bleachers. Firecrackers had been brought to the stadium and were set off in the stands and thrown onto the field. Rangers players, particularly in the first base area, dodged various objects pelted in their direction. More objects rained down on the field following the Rangers' angry argument on a close play at third base that had gone in the Indians' favour. Remarkably enough, the Indians rallied to tie the game 5-5 in the ninth and had the winning run on second. Equally remarkably, the crowd hadn't boiled over into a full riot at this point. But now came the incident that kicked the whole thing off. A 19-year-old fan named Terry Yurkich breached the playing area and attempted to grab the cap of Texas outfielder Jeff Burroughs. Whilst fending off Yurkich, Burroughs stumbled, prompting Rangers manager Billy Martin to believe that Burroughs was being attacked. He and the Texas players charged out of the dugout armed with bats and were confronted by a mob that had surged from the stands to surround the Rangers. 
The mob was armed with knives, clubs and other implements torn from the stadium structure. Realising that the Rangers players were now in danger, Cleveland manager Ken Aspromonte instructed his players to take to the field with bats and defend the Rangers. Several fistfights between players and fans ensued, while both teams executed a controlled retreat to the dugouts and dressing rooms. After their successful escape, crew chief Chilak, who had also become embroiled in the violence, called the game a forfeit in favour of Texas, one of only five such occurrences since the advent of stadium lighting. He later described the rampaging fans as, quote, uncontrollable beasts. Rioting would continue for 20 minutes before the Cleveland police arrived to restore order, making nine arrests. Tear gas and batons had to be used to disperse the mob. The Indians escorted the Rangers to their team bus to ensure that they left the stadium unscathed. Amazingly, Cleveland general manager Phil Sagey blamed the umpires for, quote, losing control of the game. American League president Lee McPhail disagreed criticising the beer promotion as being in large part responsible. Equally amazingly, the promotion had an encore on the 18th of July, again at 10 cents. 41,848 showed up. This incarnation passed off without incident. Now though, a limit of two beers per serving, and the presence of a team other than the Texas Rangers, managed to keep the lid on any drunken mass hysteria in the Cleveland crowd.